Welcome into the San Francisco 49ers report right here on Chat Sports. Chase Senior here with you, coming at you from Radio Row at the site of Super Bowl 57. And today's show is presented by Roan. 20% off site wide if you head to roan.com slash chat sports with the promo code chat sports. I'm coming at you on Radio Row with the commuter shirt right here. We'll tell you more about what they have to offer coming up later on in the program. As for what we're getting into on today's show, some insight on the 49ers quarterback situation heading into 2020. 23 intel on some Jimmy Garoppolo drama that's certainly been making its way all over social media. Nick Bosa breaking the bank according to Jay Glazer, Fox Sports Insider. Latest on Kyle Shanahan and yesterday I did speak with Jay Glazer of Fox Sports about all the subject matters that we're getting into on today's 49ers report. So no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, greatly appreciate all of you for making our coverage a part of your day. So I do want to bring up this tweet here from Ryan Hensley who who is a 49ers content creator, and I'm buddies with him. I was actually on his show a couple of weeks ago, and this has been the main topic of conversation among the faithful over the last couple of days. And by no means am I shooting down what he has to report here. He has his sources. That's what he had to say. And I simply asked Jay Glazer about that report out there that Jimmy Garoppolo, if he could have suited up for the NFC Championship game, basically what Ryan Hensley said is that, according to his source, unconfirmed rumor, Jimmy G could have suited up for the NFC title game against the Philadelphia Eagles and chose not to. If true, it's no wonder why Kyle Shanahan was so dis dismissive of Jimmy Garoppolo in his postseason press conference. Now, I asked Glazer about this because I just wanted to find out whether or not he had sources on the subject matter and if Jimmy Garoppolo could have played and he intentionally, in fact, sat out of the NFC championship game. And here's what Jay Glazer had to say. There's buzz out there that Jimmy Garoppolo could have played in the NFC Championship game. No, but so it, it's not that, like, they were hoping kind of more for the Super Bowl, but even so, he wouldn't have been able to do everything. Kind of would have been able to do a little bit more than Purdy was able to do at the NFC Championship game. But they were, they were hoping he was going to be able to be, and there was maybe the emergency third. Now, here's my read on this entire situation. Even if Garoppolo could have played against the Philadelphia Eagles to punch that ticket to the Super Bowl, and obviously it was a disastrous scenario for the Niners because Brock Purdy goes down. He's basically knocked out of the game after he tore his elbow up with that UCL. Then Josh Johnson gets concussed. Even if Jimmy Garoppolo could have suited up, he wouldn't have done much. And that's exactly what Glazer had to say. And basically what Glazer had to report is that the Niners – with what Kyle Shanahan had been saying in the weeks leading up to the NFC Championship game, at the end of the regular season and in the playoffs, that the best case scenario would have been Garoppolo maybe being that emergency quarterback. And going to the emergency quarterback rule, the NFL, if they truly care about player safety, should change the rule about being able to carry that emergency quarterback. You don't want to run into a situation in which Christian McCaffrey in an NFC Championship game where the Niners are so desperate and Kyle Shanahan is digging into his bag of tricks, trying to come up with all of these creative ways to run the football, where McCaffrey actually has to drop back and throw a pass against an Eagles defense that had been getting after the passer all throughout the regular season as well as in the playoffs. But regardless of what the report is from Ryan Hensley, what Jay Glazer had to say, I do think that there is some substance between what Hensley had to say and what Glazer had to say because it is becoming clear here that the Shanahan and Garoppolo dynamic certainly soured over their tenure in the Bay Area. And that was basically confirmed by Tim Kawakami of The Athletic, longtime Bay Area sports writer. And here's what he had to say in his recent article. I checked around the team and discovered, yes, the relationship between Garoppolo and Shanahan and John Lynch seems to have gone a bit south in the days or weeks leading up to the NFC Championship game loss in Philadelphia. I don't know if there was a specific blow up or conversation that led to this. I don't know what the main issue was. If I was... To make a knowledgeable guess, I'd say that the mood was always a little questionable this season between Jimmy G and Shanahan. They've never really been especially close, even while they were winning, but they worked very well together for long stretches over this period. The personality differences were a part of why this did work out. 
Lastly, until Garoppolo got hurt, then hurt again, then hurt again, and in between all that, Shanahan and Lynch traded a bunch of stuff to move up to acquire his re replacement, excuse me, in Trey Lance. Even after Garoppolo jumped back in after Lance was hurt this season, Shanahan daydreamed about Brock Purdy playing one day, and then Garoppolo got hurt again, and Purdy did play quite well. It is interesting. Kawakami, everything that he had to say there about the dynamic and the relationship between those two not always being all that great. It's also of note that Kyle Shanahan daydreamed about Brock Purdy. I've said this. I think he liked Purdy in this offense because he made quick decisions. He was very decisive, accurate with the football, which really catered into the strengths of this offense of allowing Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and others to catch the football and pick up yards after the catch because this offense is predicated on spacing as well as those playmakers being able to pick up yards out in the open space, causing missed tackles to really move the chains and alter the momentum of some football games. Now, I did see Trey Lance earlier at Radio Row. I asked his representatives if we would be able to interview him. He was so busy with his interview schedule. I will say this about Lance. He was moving around quite well here on the floor at Radio Row not wearing a boot. He was doing a, a spot with a couple of companies here, looked to be in good spirits, but he did tell Rich Eisen during an interview spot on that show that it certainly was a difficult season here in 2022, and we'll get to what the quarterback situation looks like for San Francisco between him and Brock Purdy coming up because Jay Glazer certainly had some interesting insight on that as well. So let me ask you this. Whose side are you on amidst all of this drama? K for Kyle Shanahan, J for Jimmy Garoppolo, W for I don't really care because I'm not about that drama. Let us know down below on the comment section. Jay Glazer coming up next did comment on the end of Jimmy G in the Bay Area and what the quarterback situation will be in 2023. And here's what he had to say about that particular situation. A lot of questions for the Niners going into this offseason about that quarterback position. Jimmy Garoppolo, Brock Purdy, Trey Lance. Any insight as to which direction the Niners are leaning? Well, you know, not going to be Garoppolo. That part we know, right? And going before he got hurt last week, they actually were really getting the confidence that Purdy could be the guy. You know, they Just how fast he processed things, picks things up so fast. Um, his arm got stronger, which they were a little shocked about. But I think right now they're kind of content to let those two guys kind of duke it out a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I'd be surprised if they brought in like a number one quarterback. I think they like what they have in their room. And, of course, the big takeaway with what Glazer had to say there, he does not believe that a veteran quarterback is going to be brought into San Francisco to compete with Purdy as well as Trey Lance. Why is that? Glazer talked about that because it could impact a Nick Bosa contract extension. We'll get to that because there's still a lot to get to. Hope you continue to hang out with us on today's show. But first, 49ers Report is presented by Roan. Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter collection, which which is what I'm wearing, their commuter shirt, the most comfortable, breathable, flexible set of products known to man, and here's why. Products for every occasion. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, which is what I'm also wearing, dress shirts, which I'm rocking, quarter zips and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection, and mobility is also everything, especially for me at Radio Row, because we're on the move, constantly trying to get all these interviews and content here from Phoenix, Arizona. Their comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from your commute to work or 18 holes of golf. So one more time, roan.com slash chatsports, promo code chatsports, 20% off site-wide. And to the news that we covered yesterday from Super Bowl Radio Road, San Francisco, finding a D'Amico Ryan's replacement and hiring Steve Wilkes. And first, I want to get to why I like the hire. And then Jay Glazer saying this could be the hire of the offseason for all teams across the National Football League. With Steve Wilkes coming in, you had that system continuity with the 4-3. He's going to keep Chris Kosarek, the best defensive line coach in the NFL. And I think they're going to continue to run that wide nine, which is what allows San Francisco to open open up those pass rush lanes to get after the opposing quarterback. He's one of the best defensive coordinators in the sport, widely respected as a leader of men and with this defensive acumen by players and peers. He wants to become a head coach at some point. So for Steve Wilkes, here's your opportunity to do just that. San Francisco has been a breeding ground for head coaches as well as NFL executives. Rand Carthen, soon to be Adam Peters, 
D'Amico Ryans, Robert Sala, Mike McDaniel, and for Steve Wilkes, I think that being the defensive coordinator is actually a better gig than some head coaching opportunities out there like the one that he had a couple of years ago with the Arizona Cardinals because this defense is straight up loaded, folks, and it's loaded with a lot of starters who are still under the age of 30 years old. And then lastly, you still keep Chris Kosarek in the process. Glazer saying this could be the hire of the offseason for all teams across the NFL when when it comes to adding to their coaching staffs, really impressive how glowingly he spoke of Kyle Shanahan bringing in Steve Wilkes. Great pickup. And I talked to the Niners before that um, about him and just like the, the type of guy that they're getting. Um, players love him. Really creative guy. You know, it didn't work out in Arizona because things are, you can see it's hard to work out in Arizona. But no, Wilkes is like, he's perfect. You know, they have, Kyle has definitely um, been able to find some good ones over there on that side of the ball, but I think Wilkes is, I think he was a phenomenal pickup. That, that, that's going to be one of the best pickups any team's had in the offseason because to go from D'Amico, like I've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of teams when they lose like their beloved coordinator, a lot of players, man, they're going to resist to it. They're going to say, well, that's not how the last guy did it. I don't think you're going to have that with Wilkes. So I've said that I like the hire. Glazer likes the hire. What do you think of the hire? Grade the hiring of Steve Wilkes, A, B, C, D, or F. Sound off, let us know. And this is why you subscribe. We've been pumping out all types of content from Phoenix, Arizona in the lead up to Super Bowl 57. Of course, it'd be ideal if the Niners were playing in this game, but we're bringing you, especially if you follow me on Twitter, you're subscribed to the show, updates on Trey Lance, Christian McCaffrey here, Debo Samuel here, hoping to run into and catch up with CMC later, talk to some NFL insiders all throughout the week. We're doing it all here. Let's get to 80,000 subscribers. We're less than 2,000 people away. Let's round out with this. Latest on Nick Bosa. Glazer saying that Bosa with this new contract extension that is looming and what seems to be inevitable is, quote, going to break the bank. Two young quarterbacks on their rookie contracts, obviously. Right. It allows them allows to, them to save Bosa some done. money. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, so Nick Bosa, you mentioned yeah. him. Is a contract extension looming for a guy who's probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year? Yeah, I mean, that's obviously that's the cornerstone of their team. That's He affects everybody else, so yeah, I think he's going to – he'll break the bank. Easy to see why Bosa could break the bank and overtake Aaron Donald as the highest-paid defensive player in the history of the NFL. Average annual value salary for Aaron Donald is $31 million, and Bosa is still in his mid-20s. He's coming off a career year, and back in 2021, he was also fantastic. For him to combine the last two years for 15 and a half sacks coming off the torn ACL and then to run it back once again in 2022 with 18 and a half sacks, and is probably going to be the defensive player of the year is a big reason why he's going to earn himself that massive payday. So we're going to be talking a lot about Bosa being compared with that contract extension to Aaron Donald. The Niners, of course, did exercise that fifth-year option on Bosa, set to make little shy of $18 million this upcoming year, the final year of his contract, and this contract extension could happen which is what we talked about here and what Glazer alluded to. So with that, we round out today's show with another poll question. Should Bosa get paid more than Aaron Donald? Why for yes and for no. As always, we appreciate all of you for tuning into the 49ers Report. And don't forget to subscribe for daily year-round coverage of San Francisco.